Hello there, I'm Nemo and welcome back to the channel. It has been a while, I know. Today we're gonna talk about tea, color changing pigments and synesthesia, but today is a very special day because we've got company. Hi. My friend Barry is here. How are you doing? Nice to see you, man. Yeah, it's great. great to be here. I'm super excited to have you here today because we're gonna have science, a bit of history, and also quite some music. Yes. Yeah? So um, let's, let's do this. What we call tea is a preparation made by pouring hot water over leaves of Camellia sinensis, an evergreen shrub native to East Asia. Fun fact, tea is the second most consumed drink in the world after... Margarita, sir. No, Reginald. Um, after water, of course. Where is the pump? I gotta go home. Don't drink and dive. From a chemistry point of view, tea is a complex mixture of chemical compounds including caffeine, my worst enemy. The specific composition of tea depends on factors such as the type of tea, um, the way it is processed and how it is brewed. You can consider tea as both a solution and a suspension. In fact, some compounds from the leaves are water-soluble, which means that they break up into smaller components or dissolve to become part of the solution. However, other components are not water-soluble and will remain suspended in the water, giving its characteristic cloudy appearance. The words for tea in different languages, such as te, cha, and chai, reflect the history of the spread of tea culture and trade from China to other countries. Sha was the first word for tea used in English, coming through Portuguese traders in Macau that used the Cantonese pronunciation back in the 16th century. Tea arrived in English for the first time in the 17th century through Dutch traders, it came either indirectly from the Malay word or directly from the Min Chinese pronunciation. Now, chai originated from the Northern Chinese pronunciation of Sha and was given the ending E when it spread through Central Asia and Persia. Then this one entered the English language around the 20th century. Now, today, most countries use a variation of Te, Sha or Chai to describe tea in their language. Let us know in the comments how you say tea in your language. Woo. Hey Bear. Hey man. You fantastic creature. <laughs> you wanna introduce yourself a bit? Sure, I'm Bear. I am an art pop adventurer. I'm a songwriter, an artist, and uh, all around creative, I guess. Yeah. yeah, that's all cool, but who are you? <laughs> Oh wow, it's getting, getting deep fast. Deep, Nemo. deep, deep. Who am I? Um, I think, I mean, creative is sort of like a nice word that, that covers a lot of bases, you know, because I've lived a lot of lives in a way. Um, I used to be a teacher, Whoa. a school teacher, yeah. Um, but I always, like, I started writing songs when I was about 12. What was the name of your first song? Do you remember? Ooh, I don't, I wish I did, that is a good question, but like, um, there's definitely some like very cringy recordings of that time where like, where like cringe my voice hasn't dropped yet, like I, mm -hmm. have, I, don't, I don't have a lower voice yet, and so I've got these recordings with very extremely high voice, which incidentally, I've come back to, like I use some of my head yeah, voice, high like voice, high yeah, sometimes, it's true, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think I, I think probably my main identity is like as a songwriter, you know? Okay, okay. Like that's kind of, that's the, the part of the process I, I love the most, I would say. But I also love performing on stage and um, yeah. And I love uh, doing kind of creative overlap projects that 
involve different areas, which is why I'm so excited to be here today. This is actually one of my first, this is my first like appearance on a YouTube channel, on a, a different YouTube channel. Exciting. Yeah, it is. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, um, what about you? Who are you? Tell me about. Was not expecting the, the ping pong dynamic. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> this is a very deep question, isn't it? Isn't it like the, the entire point of existence? You know, to, uh, <laughs> to explore and understand who you truly are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I believe I am many things. You're an right entertainer. Now. Wow. Seeing you on stage. People, people online will say. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I like many, many things. And I am many things. And I try to, you know, put all... We'll talk about, like, the multidimensionality yeah. of our personas and our artistic... Uh, take on things but but yeah i am many things i like to think of myself as a little you know fragment of consciousness mm. this part of the universe like the universe becoming a bit conscious for a fragment of time you know and just drifting through the cosmos mm. that's beautiful a bit dramatic isn't it yeah it is but it's <laughs> also it's also really like very deep it is it's yeah. true that's what we are we're just dust you know yeah 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 and um, yeah, so so we met at TEDx Frankfurt. Um, That's right. This fall. It was uh, very cool, I have to say. Um, yeah, so you were a performer, I was a speaker, and, um, and it was very nice to uh, to get to know you there, both as a person and on stage. I I, I gotta say I was very completely mesmerized by um, by your performance, and your performance was not Thanks, just. Man music and narration it also involves tea which is the reason why we just talked about tea a little bit before yeah. uh, we'll get back to your tea later but are you a tea person am i a tea person uh i've definitely become more a lot more of a tea person more okay. recently i grew up around a lot of chai okay actually so like sweet milk tea uh black tea with a lot of sugar uh and then Later on, like herb, I've like I've sort of developed a taste for herbal teas. Okay. More recently. Okay. Yeah. Do you drink a lot of tea? I do drink a lot of tea these days. I drink tea every day. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've started drinking black tea in the mornings as well, or like different different chais and black teas in the morning. Yeah. Cool. Trying to get off too much coffee. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, coffee. Is nice. So I have a very conflicting, you know, relationship, relationship with, with coffee. caffeine in general. Uh -huh. uh, so, so oh, I, I love coffee, though. That's a thing. Yeah. I love it, but like after two or three espresso in the morning, like I start getting the jitters. Okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> for me, it's like it's you know matter and antimatter, and they meet, they, they meet <laughs> together, and they just obliterate themselves, and nothing, you know. Should I? It's kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, caffeine is like I consider it my arch nemesis, essentially. Wow. So, so wow. okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna confess a little yeah. secret. I'm I'm always tired. I'm not exhausted, but I am always tired. Base level of tired. Yeah, and for me, it is part of, of who I am, and I really like that. Like, I like to be in this weird psychological cocoon, and everything is just cozy, and any place could be a place to nap, you know? Wow. And, um, and I, I like that. It's almost a personality trait. A bit of a always, dream state. Yeah. Sort of? Yeah. Kind of like Whoa. a cat person. I, say, I should not, try that. And and, uh, and I like that. And I know it's it works with Are me. Are you awake right now? Oh shit! Is it a dream, babe? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Like it's it's it's, uh, it's it's part of me. I like yeah. that. And when I when I drink caffeine, I obliterate the yeah, aspect of who I am, of that feeling, you know. And I don't feel like being myself anymore. And so I do not drink coffee uh, sometimes i do take some caffeine that is intake the, that is the craziest reason for not drinking coffee that i've ever like anyone's ever told me yeah <laughs> yeah uh, or like the most uh, the most unique reason like you know, that you don't want it is you don't want to obliterate sort of this base level dream state that you're in that's crazy yeah i like it that's awesome um but uh yeah so i i end up drinking maybe two coffees a year or something like that when you know, I have a deadline or I really cannot be in that. Oh, everything. That's me before noon, too. at least, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that, that is my, my, my relationship with caffeine. But yeah. So 
Yeah, during your TED talk, my TED talk, your your TEDx performance, yeah. you you talk a bit about your album mm -hmm. and why don't we start with the first music snippet, music interlude of the day? Mm -hmm. Maybe you get to talk about your album mm -hmm. playing some music. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, let's do it. So what's happening here is a classic chemistry trick, but to understand it, we're going to need to dive deep into the chemical nature of this solution. <laughs> it's perfect. This is technically not a tea, in the sense that there is no trace of the tea plant in here. We still call it herbal tea though, or infusion, or tisane. So, if there is no trace of Camellia sinensis in here, what is in here? Bear's magic tea is composed of mint, nettle, ginger, hibiscus, um, licorice root and butterfly pea flower. And among those two ingredients, two really catch my attention. The hibiscus and the butterfly pea flower. And that is because both of those contain a molecule called anthocyanin, which really is at the heart of this colorful magic trick. Anthocyanin is the pigment which is responsible for the red, purple or blue color of many vegetables and fruits, like blackberries, cherries, eggplants, red onions or red cabbage. It is also the pigment which gives wine its characteristic red color. The cool thing about anthocyanin is that it changes color based on the pH of its environment. So what is pH though? Well, pH is a measure of acidity. It ranges from 0 to 14. Acids have a pH less than 7, while alkalis or bases have a pH greater than 7, 7 being neutral. At the molecular level, the 
pH is a measure of the concentration of the hydrogen ions in a substance. To understand this, picture water. As you know, the formula for water is H2O. Now, the thing is, not all the molecules in water are under the form of H2O. A very tiny percentage have dissociated into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now, those two ions in water are quite in balance because they come from the same molecule. So the pH of water is quite close to 7, it is neutral. But other solutions might have a higher or a lower concentration in hydrogen ions and that determines their pH. Anthocyanin is quite a cool pH indicator. Its color will shift towards red in acidic environment while more blue or greenish in basic environments. These colors, they look slightly different based on where you extract your pigment from. But one easy way to try this at home is using red cabbage. You can try to cook red cabbage in different solutions. In normal water, the water will look blue. But now if you add some acid like lemon juice, you'll see your water and your red cabbage becoming way more red. Same thing, adding baking soda, you will increase the pH and now the anthocyanin will become very green. If you're looking for a fun, tasty and colorful dish, you can go check out Christian Liu's color changing noodles. I might try that later. Hey you, do you like music? Yay! And do you like tea? Ooh, no, I'm not like a grandma or something. But what about a tea that changes color? Oh wow, how did you do that? It's the power of magic. And, and chemistry, he added acid to the tea which decreased the pH, so not particularly magic to be honest. My uncle Jim says that acid makes him see colors that do not exist. I think that's another type of acid. Did you bring the kid? No. Is this your son? No! Actually, he looks more like you. <laughs> we really don't look like each other. Who's your mom, kid? You better sit down. And have some tea. Bear's Magic Tea, Art Pop Album and Color Changing Tea. Family drama not included. <sighs> <sighs> so, I, I thought it was very cool that uh, during the TEDx, um, you, you and me, we both mixed music with narration, right? Yeah. We, we told stories through music, but it was not just narration mixed with rhythm and melody. I thought yours was really great, by the way. Ah, thank you. Yours very was funny. also very cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it wasn't just narration yeah. and, and, and melody and rhythm mixed together. There is also a sense of nostalgia, of hope, just feelings and senses involved. And, you know, in your case, there's also this colorful, visual, but also tasty treat in it, mm -hmm. right? And I think this is very fascinating. This is a very important topic for me. Um, I always thought that the more senses you stimulate in your audience, then the more doors to their hearts and minds you're using to try to convey a message, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this is also something I try to do on my YouTube channel where you know, I mix animation and music and science and humor all together just to convey a very simple message about curiosity and all of that but yeah so my, my 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 question to you is like what pushed you to go to go multi-sensorial with your with your album mm. Mm -hmm. it's a good question it was like a i guess it was sort of a mixture of things even then because it was like during corona lockdown the mm -hmm. first one right so like i'm i'm there like alone in my space, my tour is canceled, and I start these songs like are mostly like to soothe myself, to, to like sort of calm down. And um, and these songs start coming, and I'm drinking a lot of tea in that time too, because I'm sitting alone in my room and writing these songs. And the songs themselves sort of felt like a soothing experience, like a, like a tea, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so already there, something started connecting. 
And I had written a song called Magic Tea like 10 years before that. Okay. Which um, I never like publicize anything it's shit like i, w- I wouldn't <laughs> it's like, it's, okay it's not on the album okay like, it okay. didn't make like originally I, I was like oh i'll rewrite this song once i had the idea of the deal but i didn't make it on the album it's an old song but that was where like the title mm-hmm. originated from no. and and then in the meantime like um i had a friend that had asked me to bring i was in thailand for uh, for a work state just before corona mm-hmm. and she had asked me to bring back this this flower the yep. butterfly pea flower mm-hmm. um for for something that she was working on a project she was working on and as i started asking questions she told me about this flower that that turns uh you know a tea a certain color a blue sort of a blue tint i was like that sounds super interesting so those things were sort of all going around in my head at the same time as mm-hmm. i was writing these songs and, and i realized like uh, I've always, I've always like been interested in making albums that go beyond just the music. Yeah. So like, my previous album, we did paintings. My partner, who's a visual artist, did like paintings for each song. Um, so there's always been that interest, and then I was like, how cool would it be if there was like a dedicated T, you know, for an album? And uh, that's kind of how the, the idea sort of came about. And of course, another factor that really drove it was the Corona lockdown because mm-hmm. I wasn't able to play any concerts. There was no way to really like involve my audience in the concert live experience. Yeah. So the main part of it really was to get this tea made within that first year and send it out. We sent out 400 packages to my fans mm-hmm. throughout the world. And then we had a live a Zoom concert and everyone had the tea at home. So oh, it really, cute. yeah, it was awesome. And it was really sort of like an extension of the concert space in the, in a time where it wasn't possible to me. Yeah, COVID must have been tough for artists, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I just wanted to say it, but like the, the birth of the channel coincides with the beginning of the first lockdown. Your because, YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. That's because sick. I yeah. I always wanted to go in that direction, but I never had, you know, the time and energy to, you know, to put into it. And at a certain point, oh, I found myself locked at home. Yeah. Without, okay, no external yeah. stimuli. It's like, okay, well, maybe it is time to you know, <laughs> yeah. create Yeah, super some interesting. Um, Be- you know? Because like, I think that, like you said, like must have been hard for artists, right? Like, yes, but I also hear like that story a lot. Yeah. Like that COVID and the, the lockdown was a, was like a reset moment, mm-hmm. like a ground zero for, for a lot of artists and creatives mm-hmm. to like, okay, now I'm going to do the thing that I've always wanted to do or do something different that I maybe wouldn't have done. Yeah, totally. And Magic Tea, like my my tea album was kind of the same. Like then we sent these little packages out to people and things evolved from there. Have you seen uh, Bo Burnham's Inside? Because I haven't I, seen it. Me neither. Okay, okay. So Good. like I, I know about it and I've been waiting for the right moment to sit down and watch the whole thing. I've seen little snippets, it looks incredible. Mm-hmm. But immediately after I did the live, because I also did um, a YouTube live stream concert mm-hmm. as we did this, which was very much like lit and uh, kind of planned out. And right after that, someone told me yeah. about that. I was like, yeah. you need to see this, because this yeah. is kind of what, what he did too, mm-hmm. right? So I, I haven't seen it for two reasons. Um, one is that I, well, I, I'm pretty sure, well, it's a lot, it's, it's going to be a lot of emotions and yeah. to be like, oh, today is a good day. I'm very happy. I have the right energy to handle this. It's because true. if it's a day where like, I'm a bit down, I don't want to watch it. Yeah. And the other thing is also, I have this thing that, you know, well, I didn't make a lot of things during lockdown, being quite productive and creative. I, I know for sure that the documentary, musical, whatever you want to call it, is amazing. I've yeah. heard like so many good things. Yeah. I've seen like snippets and it looks incredible. And she's a part of me is like, oh, that's so cool. I, w- I wish that I use my lockdown to do something as cool as that. But you, you did. Know? I, I mean, know, I know. Describing like, like a, the birth of a YouTube channel that has mm-hmm. like thousands of, of subscribers and viewers now that are like appreciating your content. It's wow. gotten your creativity started in a totally new way. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Sometimes but I, I know that say. feeling of like watching a creative like mm-hmm. perform, outperform in a way, and and the sense I have it all the time. Where yeah. I used to have it way more. Where I'm like, wow, 
I mean, it, it's almost like a, I don't know, I don't want to step too far here, but、mm -hmm. like, for me, it's like an insecurity. Oh, no, like, totally. I think feeling、so. like, oh, my stuff isn't、mm -hmm. quite where I want it to be yet, right? Yeah, I think there's a reason why I like making YouTube science videos. I do not consume a lot of content from the science community、uh, mm -hmm. on YouTube. I think part of it is also that one, on one side, I don't want to get too influenced by, you know, Other artists and scientists' views on how they do things. I don't want to like subconsciously you know, absorb their way of saying something, or I want to do something that is completely mine. Yeah. Even though being inspired by you know, other artists is part of like, the creative process, also, but whatever.、Um, it's also that sometimes there's this insecurity, and then I watch something like,、oh, I wish I did that before. Yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. I, I had like, the. the, the, you know, the The energy and, and we all to do something that is as cool as that. Yeah. But,、uh, so、yeah we all have just, that, man. <laughs> I just close my eyes and just like, do your own thing.、Just、yeah, like, yeah. Hero, that's what you gotta do, yeah, yeah. your own thing.、Um, yeah. Yeah, so then that's what we did. And we sent, and then I ended up recording the whole thing on cassette tape, which is like something I've always wanted to do was like, really like record on an old four track. And then, of course, I had to bring it out on tape. So, like, Um, that, is, that was like one part of it where I was like, because for me, I really consider the whole process, the creative process, an, an adventure,、mm -hmm. you know?、Yep. And so then to like, at the end, like have a, a physical tape that I can hold and be like, I actually like made this, you know? And I, went, I was in a, like, we went to a Black Forest cabin, me and the producer.、Mm -hmm. We spent a weekend there and, and like laid down tracks on an old cassette tape recorder, you know? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I always bring these to concerts and people are like,、oh, tell me all the stories about their first Walkman、oh, or their first. I don't have any Walkman. You see, like, this is a house of old school、yeah. stuff. Yeah. Some, sorry. Some Game Boys and stuff back there. Yeah. But I don't have any Walkman or any of that. Yeah, so the whole thing is very warm and sort of like an acoustic, you know,、yeah. cozy. Vibe. I think without caffeine, you're, you're gonna love this, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like going to sleep. Like, oh, you know. Actually, we've been listening to all of your songs. I think they're very, you know. Te, te, how do you say? Te,、um, alimenté. Ah, how do you say alimenté in English? Alimenté. Animated?、Uh, huh? Animated? No, alimenté. Alimenté. Yeah, it's when you have a fire and then you put oil on the fire. So, you are、oh. feeding, feeding, feeding. Alimenté is feeding. Oh, wow. So, you know, I have、yeah. this dream state all the time when I listen to your music, which is kind of this, like, music is like feeding、yeah. this bit, you know,、uh, dreamy yeah, state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I like totally. that. Totally. And like the way we did the live stream and stuff too, like, it was a dreamy state I was in. Like, the place, the room I was in, and the time, you know, when everything was. <laughs> All the streets were deserted, you know?、Yeah. It really kind of captures that dreamy vibe in a way, too. Yeah. But、um, I digress. Anyway, so go check it out. Magic Tea. Nice. Well, so in your album, there is a lot of、uh, just music. Can you make an album and just no music? Well, it is funny, yeah, because, like,、uh, you know, I recently was at a stand with、uh, at a fair with、okay. my music, with I brought the tape recorder and I、mm -hmm. had my tea, but, like, people come to the stand and they're like, what the fuck is this? Like, what the hell is this, you know? Because、um, there's, like, tea and there's music. Like, it takes a lot of explaining. <laughs> Does it happen that people come and they're more interested in the tea than the music? Oh, yeah, all the time. It's like, buy the <laughs> all the tea time. Set. Yeah, well, and my tea is available in a couple of cafes now、mm -hmm. in my hometown in Heidelberg. And so there's pe there, people came to the stand and were like, oh, I've, I've had your tea before. I didn't、okay. know there was an album. Okay. Like, so it's pretty interesting to see the crossover. Yeah, so she's, she's music, she's like visual colors, and she's、uh, some nostalgia with your,、like, your tapes and.、Yeah. Uh, And then she's, you know, with the tapes, just this tasty feeling also through, through your tea. And this mixing of sensations, of senses, is very reminiscent of this perceptual phenomenon that is called. Synesthesia. Synesthesia is a condition in which the senses. Are blended and stimulation of one sense automatically triggers a response 
in another sense. This blending of the senses is involuntary and automatic, and it is experienced consistently by the person with synesthesia. A person might see the number 5 as being green in color, and every time they see the number 5, they automatically see the color green. A person might hear a particular song, and when they do, they may taste lemon or chocolate. A person might also touch a texture like velvet and automatically smell a specific scent like lavender. Whenever someone with number form synesthesia thinks of numbers, they automatically visualize a map of those numbers. Their location and appearance can vary between individuals. Another crazy example of synesthesia is mirror touch synesthesia. In that case, a person experienced tactile sensation in response to observing someone being touched. For example, if you had mirror touch synesthesia and someone would come and touch me on the arm, you would feel the same thing on your arm. And this can lead to a deeper sense of empathy and deep connection towards other people. These examples illustrate how synesthesia can involve any combination of the senses and how the experience of synesthesia is unique to each individual. <laughs> it's nice, right? It's like a, it's got a bounce, you know? <laughs> okay, so big question. Big question. Do you have synesthesia? Or do you know anybody that has I synesthesia? I don't. I kind of wish I did sometimes just to experience it, you yeah. know? But um, I and I don't know anyone directly. I know I know I have a friend that has like perfect pitch, but not synesthesia. You know, like oh, it's like, so cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but since I, forever. Or yeah, apparently, some... like wow. he can he can like you he, he can be like sing a note and be like that's middle C or whatever. Yeah, so, the person can hear it in their head before yeah, singing it. Right? Exactly, wow. which is something like I I think you can really train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That one, do but that. I don't know about synesthesia whether that would be something you could actually. Like so, train because I'm kind of getting a sense that maybe I'm I'm like getting closer to a synesthesia synesthesia experience. Yeah. So here and there. As far as I know, it's like it's genetics. Mm. Um, it's something that is not very well studied in the first place. Mm. Um, it's very complicated thing to study. Mm -hmm. um, but some people they develop it over time. I'm not sure if you can train it, you can train your brain to make associations between two things. Mm -hmm. But synesthesia is really involuntary, invol um, what's it? involuntary. In that's a very complicated word. It is. That and automatic, and it's also very consistent in time. Like 10, 20 years later, if you see a number, a certain color, you still see the same color after oh, 10 wow. years. Um, but yeah, do you think it would help you to have synesthesia? Because there are certain artists like Fire Williams, Beyonce, I don't know which one they did. I know they have um, sound to color or sound to shape synesthesia. Yeah. So they see color and shapes. Do they talk about them. how they use that? Like, uh, I, I haven't seen any video about it. Because that, that's the thing, it's like I've heard of people having synesthesia, but I haven't very often heard of people actually like using that in a very like applicable mm -hmm. kind of way. So I, I don't know, not, not that you have to, but um, it would be, I mean, I think it's super interesting when I've talked to a few people that have it, but there was never like, oh, I, I use it this way. Yeah. They weren't yeah. instrumentalizing it from yeah. what I could tell. Ah, that would be nice. Maybe I should uh, check it out and find out. I feel like, you know, when you're composing music that you have this, um, audio format and of course you can find your harmonies and you can check that everything makes sense and structurally it sounds good right yeah. but then if you can also represent that to other senses yeah it's like a double check right like it is it's like it oh is. if do the colors match like or yeah. is this shape like harmonious it's now, true right so maybe it helps but i don't know i do not have it i have well i and i and i think ugh, i talked to someone about it a while ago but like i think that it maybe like the synesthesia that they had wasn't as directly applicable like you know mm -hmm. if, like if you see a shape or a certain color with that they they might say like oh this is sort of the vibe but it was more sort of on a subconscious level yeah. Yeah. not something that you could be like oh like 
because then it's almost like you're coming up with a music video concept for a song you yeah. know what i mean yeah, which is yeah. like a different thing from experiencing it yeah right yeah it's 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 a very interesting uh, concept uh a friend of mine cyrus actually he made a video on the channel miley cyrus no <laughs> uh, maybe miley cyrus has it uh but no cyrus is a is a friend of mine he actually did a video on the secret of dolphin's testicles yeah, that sounds on the intriguing. channel. You should check check it out. Um, and um, he's a scientist, or a he's also a scientist. But we we have opportunities to get to listen to music, and he can see colors and shape yeah. and movement while wow. listening to music. Wow. Uh, I think that's that's pretty cool. I wish I had that. Most people that have synesthesia always consider it a gift, right? There's no downside in like having this blending of senses. Um, but there's no yeah. downside you don't think so I, I don't know like i could imagine it like yeah getting tedious well it depends yeah like most people i imagine would consider that a gift but then it's true that now you drink or you you have some um, you know you, you touch something and everything you touch the texture has a taste it might also be a taste you don't like right, right. like if everything okay. that is like kind of like velvet or whatever you touch it and it, it it's it tastes bitter, <laughs> like that's the sun. Suck. That's yeah. suck. But I, I don't. It's also quite a rare type of synesthesia. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It's like if the synesthesia trigger thing is like a negative thing, that would be that. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> In yeah. any case. Anyway, I, I do, I do not have synesthesia, but I might have synesthesia if you consider visual spatial representation of time. Hmm. That sounds very complicated. <laughs> No, it's actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, there's a debate about if it is considered synesthesia or not. Uh, if it is synesthesia, I think it's a pretty common, pretty common thing. Um, so the idea is what that... What did you say? The, the space and time? Yeah, so you, you visualize time in space. So, for example, oh. like, if you try to visualize yourself within the year, like, now it's January, do you see, when you close your eyes, do you see the year forming a shape or something? Mm. You do not? I don't. Really? Okay. I don't. Uh, it's, Are it's you surprised that I don't? Like yeah, I, I mean, I would say that 50% of the people I talk to so far, not a lot of people, I don't have a huge uh, pool of people I've been talking to about this, but they do, maybe it's not the year, maybe the month or the week. The week, maybe you see, the, you see yourself a little humanoid progressing from Monday to Sunday. It's like a calendar. You see a calendar yeah, in your head, sort of. Yeah, calendar, and then you move back there. I see my right? Google calendar. Like okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, well, some people that have it like very, a very strong um, yeah, no, synesthesia, no. they can use it as a, you know, as a tool. They close their eyes and they really see very well where they are in the month on a calendar. Yeah. But it's not necessarily. Well, it's a little bit like the time bar on the bottom of the video, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit like that. Yeah. And uh, representation you have that, for example, for me, minutes, I don't have representation of it. Like seconds, I don't have a representation of it. But my the hour of the day, the time of the day, I do, and it's a clock. So it's very easy yeah. for me. So I have an analog clock in my head, and when it's three, someone tells me it's three. At the same time as I'm thinking, oh, it's three o'clock, temporally speaking, I'm, I'm seeing a clock all the time. At three. Right. three and it's there and I know time is progressing like this twice a day mm. right? for weeks is the same thing so I go from Monday to Sunday and then it starts again so I'm going mm. on a calendar but the year is a circle it's a circle mm. that is around me it has like different colors but uh, the colors are like just the colors you would you would uh, give to um, to seasons so it's not mm. something particularly weird and January and December, January are on this side, and then you have July and August on the back. Oh wow! And it's like I'm I'm seeing myself at the center, and I'm like progressing on this circle in a um, clockwise fashion. Yeah. I know people they go the other side. Mm -hmm. I know people they do not see circularly but linearly. Mm -hmm. uh, or people they just like oh see the calendar where you have like every month like this. Yeah. Bop, 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 oh bop. yeah yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think 
will be an interesting topic for yeah, a video. For sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people have this. Have that. And in my case, I'm not sure how much innate that is or how much it is influenced by, you know, how we measure time. time. Yeah. Or maybe when I was a kid, you know, there was in kindergarten this, I, I don't know if it was there, but like well, a, super, there was you yeah, know, a circular representation of the year right. like this with different colors yeah, and I my brain that. just like, whoop, to like absorb that, that. And now whenever I talk about, you know, oh, what month it is, I'm seeing myself on that. But it's very weird because it's just around me like this. And uh, I never really thought about it. Someone asked me, oh, how do you perceive time? I'm like, oh, so I'm thinking about it. And I check online, a lot of people see it like this. No I mean, like, like a hula hoop. Hula yeah, hula. yeah. Well, like you're in the middle of the clock, in a way. Yeah. Or not a clock, but like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, hula hoop. It's super interesting, because, I mean, it may, in some ways, maybe someone had that uh, vision of time before we had that visual representation throughout society, right? Like maybe there was the yeah. original guy that was like, all right, we're gonna start measuring time because we gotta get things on time. Like I don't know how many hundred years ago that was, right? But, but someone had to visualize time in that way. Yeah. And then constrained by mechanical uh, possibilities, probably they decided to make a clock to do it instead of like a, I don't know, could have been anything, right? Do you people have any form of synesthesia? Let us know in a comment. Okay, anyway, it was very great, great to have you here. Hey, Mr. Nemo, thank you so much, Dr. Nemo. Sorry, Dr. Nemo it was I'm, very... <laughs> I'm technically not a doctor yet, not because yet. I don't have my PhD, but people don't know that, so don't tell them. No. Oh, but it was an honor to be here on your show. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Are you hungry? I, I'm getting hungry now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gonna make some color-changing noodles then. Color-changing noodles? The sound is good that saves this fire. The sound is good that saves this fire. What if I could listen to the flowers? Segment of line and figment of mine. Fragment of time and pigment of wine Segment of line and figment of mine Fragment of time and pigment of wine Twist and drink now and twist your drink Twist your drink now, it's time to mix and drink your tea You're in my carpet, you're in my wine I play with your pH, acidic alkaline you're in my garbage, you're in my wine I play with your pH, your city got line And twist and drink now, twist your drink Twist your drink now, it's time to mix and drink your tea Drink, 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 drink The color is changing, it's red, it's blue, it's green It's time to silence Flowers. 
fragment of blind and fragment of blind, fragment of time and pigment of wine.